Galnet News, your galaxy in focus. 22nd of March, 3302. Our top story today revolves around one commander's claim of sovereignty over the Sagittarius A-star system. Chip Washington has more. Unusual news from the Galactic Center, where an independent pilot declared herself queen of Sagittarius A-star earlier last week. Commander Lysia Nasa, the self-proclaimed monarch, made the two 6,000 light-year journey in a fully armed federal corvette, with heavy bulkheads and prismatic shields. Most explorers traveling to the center of the galaxy are lightly armed, if at all. Few recognize the authority of Her Royal Majesty Queen Lysianasa, but the explorers going into the system are allegedly bullied into submission through sheer force. Commander Lysianasa claims to be bringing law and order to an otherwise anarchic system, thus protecting defenseless explorers. The legality, let alone the morality of her right-by-conquest approach has been the subject of heated debates between independent pilots. According to most, Commander Lysianasa's actions are nothing more than criminal activities and delusions of grandeur. While there are no provisions yet in interstellar law about the neutrality of Sagittarius A-star, it is commonly referred to as a natural heritage site for humanity. This has been Chip Washington, Galnet News. The Beta Hydri Corporation last week announced that the federal campaign to construct a new Farragut battlecruiser is complete. According to a company spokesperson, the galactic community responded positively to the appeal, resulting in the rapid construction of the new federal vessel. Captain G.C. Richards, who oversaw the project, released a brief statement to the media, saying, The Federation extends its gratitude to all those who supported this initiative. Your hard work has given the Federal Navy a potent new asset. Captain Richards went on to single out a pilot by the name of Commander Kemza, who made the largest single contribution to the initiative. President Hudson has even extended the honor of naming the new ship to Commander Kemza in recognition of their singular contribution. The new ship is expected to embark on its inaugural voyage soon. Notably absent from President Hudson's remarks was any sort of reaction to the blockade of the Beta Hydri system by the Imperial 13th Legion and others, on which Galnet reported last week, and could have potentially delayed or cancelled the vessel's construction efforts. However, it appears that despite the blockade by various Empire factions, the project received the materials it needed. While the Empire itself made no official response to the announcement of the cruiser's completion, an anonymous source from the upper echelons of Imperial society has revealed that Admiral Denton Patrius has expressed concern over the Federal Initiative. In a message released to a number of media feeds, the anonymous source said, The construction of a new ship, even a warship like the Farragut, isn't necessarily a cause for concern, but we have reason to believe that the Federation intends to significantly expand its navy over the coming months, and naturally this has the Admiral Patrius worried. If the Federation did indeed embark on a campaign of military fortification, it's likely the Empire would respond in kind. Now over to Chip Washington once again for an update on galactic politics. In this past week, the Federation experienced resource shortfalls affecting the areas of responsibility of both President Zachary Hudson and Shadow President Felicia Winters. President Hudson recalled federal fleets from Alawa and HIP-24046. If resource shortfalls are not accounted for within the coming week, President Hudson may be forced to withdraw fleets from Lee Jungu, AF Leporis, and Korovi. Similarly, Shadow President Winters is struggling to meet aid commitments in HIP 38747 and is in danger of losing the system support. In the Empire, a dozen key systems were the focus of imperial political machinations this week. Emperor Arisa Luvini Duval deployed the Shield of Justice to Akakwang, Aokax, and Hrun, where the fleets now enforce imperial justice. Senator Zamina Torval expanded significant resources to finalize the purchase of key infrastructure throughout the Gakruk system. Princess Ashlyn Duval's campaign suffered some setbacks this past week. Six influential systems, Mula Wendes, Nyalayan, HIP-95256, HIP-105391, HIP-3603, and Blod, withdrew their direct support for the People's Princess. Senator Denton Petraeus' fleets moved into Angahana 
and HIP-116-045, where they now defend Imperial interests on behalf of the Admiral of the Fleet. For the Alliance, the Prime Minister Edmund Mann secured a trade agreement for the Alliance in Ross 842. Alliance negotiators are currently seeking to forge trade ties with four additional systems, Aran Baron Fedmik, HR-6328, and Ross-151. Should they succeed, the Alliance will boast a network of 95 trade centers. And finally, for the independence, the growth of Utopia under the leadership of Simguru Pranav Antel was the highlight of the last week in the independent sphere of influence, with Brynhilo and Har Itariu officially becoming a part of Utopia. CEO Lee Young Ru was unable to extend a series franchise to any new system last week, but is working to finalize a contract in V780 Tari this week. Pirate Lord Archon Delane's attempt to overthrow Latugara was unsuccessful last week, and no new Kumo incited insurrections have been spotted last week. But criminal activity is stirring in systems bordering the Pegasi sector. This has been Chip Washington, Galnet News. The normally peaceful Wilkes Orbital in the Nespolive system has been the focus of considerable attention in recent weeks. First, the starport was at the center of a campaign to drive the Blue Hand Gang from the nearby Orolas system. Then, authorities at the station announced that the escape pods recovered in the operation contained Professor Ishmael Palin and the other members of the research team. Now it seems that the majority of those recovered from the criminals, including Professor Ishmael Palin, have been infected with a strain of Cerberus Plague, the deadly pathogen that claimed millions of lives last year. Governor Lawrence, the principal administrator of Wilkes Orbital, has released a statement to the media, in which he said, The situation is certainly serious, but it's important to keep things in perspective. At present, the disease is confined to those who were rescued from the Blue Hand Gang, so it should be perfectly possible to keep it contained. The pertinent task is to cure the infected. Governor Lawrence was then asked how he intended to proceed, and responded, This is a new strain of the Cerberus Plague, one we've never seen before. But it seems that the ceremonial Haiketi, which was used to cure the original strain of the plague, is also effective against this version of the disease. We have therefore issued an open order for ceremonial Haiketi, with which to cure the infected. Any surplus tea will be stockpiled in anticipation of further outbreaks, although I should stress that such a scenario is extremely unlikely. The appeal for ceremonial Haiketi began on the 17th of March and has two days left to run. This next report is from Karen Keish. Maxim Viktik Kamara, chief engineer of the Carmack Intergalactic Mining Association, has released a statement concerning the ongoing SEMA prospectus competition. He said, We are very pleased that, with your help, we have been able to double the amount of known pristine metallic ring locations, most of which are very close to the bubble. Now we need to prepare for the final sprint. The competition will end on the 3rd of April, 3302. Any data on pristine metallic rings should be reported before this date. For decades, the revolutionary party of Venik has been terraforming the planet Venik-1, slowly transforming it into a habitable world. With the ambitious project about to enter its final stage, the organization has placed an open order for terrain enrichment systems with which to prepare the planet's surface for agricultural development. A spokesperson for the Revolutionary Party of Venik released a brief statement, saying, Terraforming a planet takes decades, so we're delighted to be entering the final stage. Our aim is to establish an agricultural economy on Venik 1, so it can contribute to the production of food and medicine in the Venik system. With the support of the galactic community, we will soon be able to reap the benefits of our efforts. The organization has promised to reward those who deliver the much-needed commodities to Nixon Enterprise in the Venix system. The campaign began on the 17th of March and has two days left to run. That's the Galnet News for today. Tune in next time to keep your galaxy in focus.